when I was doing my last year in varsity, okay, I was coming okay. from school, going to rest. And then uh, they took my belongings. I was standing like this in the bridge, I understand. Like, took, yeah, yeah, I took everything. So I didn't even think twice. And then I had to jump like this, turn like this, because I was flexible. And then I landed on my feet. All right, cool. How are you, my brother? I'm super happy in yourself, my brother. I'm ah, fantastic. Please tell people who you are, uh, where you're from. Okay, my name is uh, Kulane Sikosana. I'm from Fos Loras. So uh, my name Kulane, it means growth. So I am also the chairman of Ivuataki, the founder of Ivuataki. Ivuataki is a pro-black uh, online avenue geared towards awakening uh, the black race and also geared towards pushing black businesses, pushing African beauty. So and also creating brand awareness for black businesses, given the fact that uh, lack of access to market is the biggest stumbling block for black businesses. As I alluded that my name is Kulani, it means growth. So I was assigned from birth the role of growing the black race. So that's my uh, duty here on earth. What made you to start Vogadaki? So as I alluded that I've seen that uh, the white media doesn't portray Africans on a positive light. So instead of me uh, pushing the rhetoric and complaining that the white media this and that, I was like, let us create our own alternative uh, media that portrays Africans on a po positive light. So it's, it's more like a, a an avenue get towards counteracting, counteracting all the negative portrayals of Africans through self-loving uh, uh, images and messages. So are you saying that the media, yes. um, I don't want to call it white media, yes. but do you think it's white media? Do you think the media it's, is yes, just white it's, media? It's, it's, it's white media because even the narrative that uh, they push is an anti-black uh, narrative. Uh, by way of example, Daily Sun is a white owned media avenue, but when you see the, the narrative and the content that they are pushing is an anti black media narrative, more fundi paper, Daily Sun, you will see with Bazuti, father uh, kills son for a box of cigarettes, you understand? They, you won't see positive success stories from uh, such media avenue. So it's, it's, it's an attack. Uh, to, to, to the black nation. You understand? Because you need to understand, even Malcolm X teaches us that the media is a powerful uh, entity. It can uh, make the oppressor to come across as if he's innocent and also make uh, the oppressed uh, to come across as a, 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 an aggressor. You understand? So yeah, that, 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 that's hence why I created this avenue. So you're saying that the media is literally showcasing the negativity that's happening in the black society. Yes. Um, it can be a mother kill father, yes. uh, a daughter kill daddy. In order to validate that the black life that don't matter, you understand? Yeah. So it's, it's more of like, you know, you need to understand that um, as a people, whatever is projected about who we are, it reflects uh, back on us. Uh, the collective consciousness of uh, uh, Africans is, is, is controlled by how the mainstream media uh, portrays us. And now when you see that black people are constantly being um, labeled as corrupt, because if you can see even the white media, the white media is geared towards pushing the narrative that black people are corrupt, you, your politicians are corrupt, it's geared towards pushing that narrative and also uh, protecting the, the, the interest of a, a white people. White people are also corrupt, uh, can talk about many cases such as your staying off whereby billions have been looted and no one has been uh, held accountable. Uh, ABSA owns uh, the state uh, an apartheid debt that is more than 50 billion. 
but they have never been portrayed as such in the in the media but you saw how they tried to even how they destroyed a uh, vbs you understand so that, that 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 that's the white media for you i'm having an issue with the with the media that you're talking about is that it feels like it's another color that's trying to destroy another color exactly. but when you go to these media houses you literally find our own people with the same color that we have writing the same story of this of their own people exactly you need to understand that um um apartheid didn't end uh, they just uh, remixed it so you find that now um it has been widely entrenched in our collective consciousness to a large extent that even uh black owned media every news they push an anti black uh, narrative because now it is uh, instilled upon our mind so now for someone to work for a white media of course they they work within a certain agenda you understand they are given a certain agenda they are told what to report how to report so whatever they are reporting um is based on uh the mandate that they got from their white authorities you can have a black uh ceo owning um running a media avenue so you need to understand that there's a difference uh between um owning and controlling you understand we can own maybe a a, a media avenue but in terms of the, the the controlling you find that it's controlled by external forces even the narrative so you find that even black people they were like i'm going to push uh, sex i'm going to push prostitution i'm going to push crime in order to make my media avenue to pop and as in order to gain uh, traction so when it comes to white people black people working for white media avenue so it it's is they do it for survival you understand so uh they don't have no control whatsoever they are just tools uh used uh in order to push their agenda so it's it's, it's also a fruitless exercise to have more black producers that don't have a a a a a, a, a pro black development outlook because they are going to still perpetuate uh, the anti-black uh, narrative and understand because you cannot say it's not about color whereas us as africans we were marginalized and disfranchised based on the color of our skin and that thing is also being perpetuated in order to maintain and sustain white privilege do you think we are going somewhere with creating our own platforms as black people i mean like i'm clear that you 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 used history as a point of reference that uh before 1994 uh artists were more pushing a positive narrative 100%. a pro black narrative but fanda bo bo thola bo mera makeba ba kulingo ma saying aluta continue to a large extent that even the apartheid government they they by about ban they like, ban them in, in yeah south africa the likes of human sickle and the list is exhausting they ban the music actually yeah, yeah. the music yeah to be precise and then yeah abo letambuli they came and then they told us in after 94 mangale ngomale not yet uhuru to tell them which um the struggle still continues you understand we haven't gotten our land and so forth so um 1994 gave black people that illusion of inclusion so now they are no longer singing about uh music that liberates liberates and adds value so now is all about the politics of the stomachs now their their music they singing through their stomach and then uh, by that i mean that which they think for their stomach which yeah. hey i have to eat therefore i have to push this certain narrative so that i can gain traction and also you need to understand even thomas sankara teaches us that he who feeds you controls you so when you look at uh artists 
um the the sponsors are uh, the likes of savannah or uh, white corporates therefore they have to set their narrative in a way that uh pleases the people that feed them why do you think you are if you go to a public platform you could be so limited to say what you want to say and you are not free to say whatever that you want to say like oh, here on youtube because yeah, of course they are going to cancel you, you understand they are going to cancel you because they have the power they have the authority and so hence it is of chief paramount importance that we as africans control our media avenue so that we can control our narrative owning our own cable networks and all that will make us to have power because if you create content that is developing the black race you won't get hmm. uh, a time uh, on 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 radios or on tv True. your 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 tv series or whatever won't be placed on my dstv and what not so in order for it okay i'm going to make an example uh in in the queen the queen which is a sop yeah, yeah. yeah soap or whatever ran by the Ferguson family about Connie Ferguson when you look at do you think that the queen was going to because you know okay let me just give you a glimpse overview what the queen is about for emphasis purposes so they're all about pushing drugs and whatnot and the heroes there uh are the drug dealers and as Nabo Harriet those are they so now tell me when a black child sees that you see with the net drugs it means they pay and as Nabo Zalo uh the 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 villains are the heroes abunkunzi nanan you understand with now we are conditioned and socialized uh to be criminals you understand we cannot have a functional uh society whereas um they are portrayed as criminals as prostitute and hence why uh, earlier on I alluded that the media is a powerful uh, entity that co controls our collective consciousness. Uh, this thing of saying that, you know, most of content producers, they like using the justification uh, to say that, yeah, it has to sell. A uh, positive narrative, narration doesn't, doesn't sell. sell. But you need to understand that as a content producer, it is your moral uh, responsibility to use your platform to add value uh, to others. You understand? As much as media can destroy, media can build. You understand? That's true. If you have a platform, for example, I've been uh, following this podcast. You, 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 you speak about elements of newsworthiness, things that build. You understand? Whereas when you see most of the podcasts that are emerging, you find them interviewing prostitutes, interviewing criminals. You understand? So, what? Why, why would you give someone a time? who who's destroying the black nation and so you are saying that he is a good uh, uh role model that people must aspire to so i'm saying that uh content producers have that moral responsibility to make sure that they portray africans on a positive light so that it can reflect back on them cool um when you look at black people there's a whole lot of poverty here yes in Africa, let me just say Africa. Indeed. Why do you think black people are so poor? Uh, black people are poor by virtue of being uh, colonized. It is of chief paramount importance that we take a hike <coughs> back into memory lane so that we understand why we are in the situation that we are in. People often overlook history. But you need to understand, if you look at history, you'll see that the primary source of our problems as Africans, which is poverty, diseases, and everything, and all the social ills, is uh, Europeans. Uh, if you take a hike back into memory, and you, you'll see which, as Africans, we owned our own crops, our own land, we were farming, we had livestock. We were not poor. In fact, there was no poverty before 1652. There was no homelessness uh, before 1994. You understand those things. So it's important. History 
uh, it shows us as to uh, why we are in a situation that we are in. And to say that we are referring to history doesn't mean that we stay in history. History it shows us who is our oppressor. So that when you know your history, you know which you don't repeat what uh, uh, our forebears did. You understand? You need to understand that uh, why people they like using maybe certain terms in order to downplay their racism and their colonizer. They will say that they didn't colonize us. They will say they conquered us. But when you look at history, they came in here with rifles, uh, forcefully raped our mothers, robbed us of our culture, stripped us of our heritage. You understand? It's the historical account. So now we are suffering from psychological trauma because a great deal of our people like analyzing things from an ahistorical uh, perspective. By ahistorical, I mean like without referring back uh, to history. It took them more than 500 years uh, to colonize us. Therefore, it cannot take uh, 28 years to reverse that. You understand? And also, uh, we haven't even taking the step forward to make sure that we change the narrative you understand? because uh, they use the media in order to inculcate that perspective with Tina as Africans, we are inferior. You see that uh, trauma is still going to be uh, uh, transferred to, to the next uh, generation. You understand? Because you need to understand that our land is the basis of economics. Land is also the basis of uh, my manhood as a man. Even So now, you see now as men, now we are being emasculated because we don't have that wealth. You understand? I'll make an example. When a man loses a job, abusive, you understand? Because now he can no longer provide. So now, but in daughter must provide and protect. How can I be able to protect my, 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 my woman? How can I be able to provide my woman? Whereas I don't have the financial uh, muscle. So we are not in equal uh, footing. So this uh, trauma will continue until we, 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 we have thick balls. Angela, which is see, so was which is totally listen to this too. I want to take a pull by his horn. You know, I I have to agree with you when you spoke about the trauma and the results of the trauma of what happened to our forefathers back yes. then um, is black people not even treating each other well. Yes. When you go everywhere, man, you as a black person, you've been treated very badly, even by black people. That's the saddest thing. Ever. Yes. You are being treated by your own brother, your own sister, who looks exactly like you. Mm -hmm. And when I look at it, I'm like, look, it's because of it's the effects of the trauma that happened back then. We are unable to treat ourselves even better. Yes. We are killing each other. We are robbing each other. You yourself, you actually had to find yourself in the hospital because of another brother. Yes. Please tell me about your journey of, because I can see you are on, on a wheelchair. Yes. Allow me to ask you what happened. Okay. Um, when I was doing my last year in varsity, um, I used to be actually a dancer. So the day before uh, I got injured, I had won a Blackberry, and you remember it ran about 2011. Okay. Blackberry was an in thing. So it was more of like a competition. Uh, I was representing University of Johannesburg amongst other uh, universities. So you, you went to University of Johannesburg? Yes, yes. What, was, what were you studying? I was studying business management. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. And then on my last year, um, they they marked me my phone, so I was staying in an outside com accommodation. So called. they marked you the phone that you actually won at yes, the competition. Yes, 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 yes. I was standing in a bridge valley when when they marked me. Where were you class. coming from? I was coming from school. Oh, okay. I was okay. coming from school, going to rest, 
And then uh, they took my belongings and only to find out, you know, when you are a dancer, you are popular. So I was more of a popular guy because even on my dance competition, I don't even remember losing a dance competition. So I was that that good, you understand? So, so you was, were dancing what? Um, Pantola? No, I was Chai Spucho, hip hop. So I was uh, versatile. Yeah, oh, okay. So you were literally like, uh, you know that guy, Limpopo boy? Yeah, I think yeah. they were not there in well. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think same level. Marina, Mfanani, and Mina, maybe one Michael Jackson. <laughs> Michael Jackson. <laughs> Michael yeah. Jackson. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, hey, then I'm there in the bridge and whatnot. And then this guy came and then they took my belongings only to find out that one of the people who were mugging me know me, whereas Mina, I don't know him. And he was like, shoot this boy. Meaning like, also, they know you from the competition. Not, not, not competition per se. I'm saying that around, I used All to people, dance. Oh, like me, okay. me, I was a popular dancer. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. Yes, I was a popular dancer. I even had a group that I was choreographing, teaching how to dance back then. And then, yeah, and then that thing happened. Ankombang is pamu. Nanani, shoot this boy. I understand. How many were there? There were two. There were four. There, there were four. four. Yes. So, Aish, I was standing like this in the bridge. I understand. Right. Took, yeah, yeah, I took everything. So I didn't even think twice. And then I had to jump like this, turn like this, because I was flexible. And then I landed on my feet. I understand. And then uh, I collapsed. I understand. And then uh, the following day, street kids, they found me there. So I tried eating memes because it was a bridge there memes. So nearby is like, well, I'm a Texas rank, I was a Makuni, I was a Makuni, I was a Makuni. So, yeah, memes, I'm a Texas driver, they couldn't believe what I jumped from there. So we thought that maybe I'm, I'm playing around and whatnot. So I was like, help me, help me. I couldn't even feel my legs. I understand. Mind you, I'm inside of a train. Yeah, I told him I need to lay the apparatus. So I had to roll 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 and then yeah. so four street kids they came and then they rescued me and then they took me up and then uh, some of the uh, the street vendors they tried calling the ambulance and then the ambulance came fast and then they took me to hospital and then yeah that's how i got injured so you woke up at the hospital and the doctor no, I meant I was already up. So subsequent to jumping, I collapsed. Then I wake up in the morning oh. and I start screaming for help, screaming for help. Yeah. Those taxi drivers, they were like, hey, we are all out. I hear you calling to the I told them to leave. 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 And then they, they came, came yeah. and they picked me up. And then they put me there in the pavement. And then they called an ambulance. I'm a vendor. And then, yeah, then I went to hospital. The great, the greatest thing here is that as much as you are attacked by your own people, yes, you are also helped by your own people. Exactly. Uh, another thing uh, you need to understand, I even forgive those guys who did this to me because I understand that uh, black people are operating outside themselves. You understand? It's like they've been possessed by an alien force uh, which makes them to hate each other. Hence why even on my initial uh, uh, talk, I emphasized the issue of how apartheid uh, made us to hate each other as Africans. And also there's a great African scholar by the name of Dr. Amos Wilson. He teaches us that black on black violence is a bypass product of white on black uh, violence. And uh, white on black violence, which I alluded, such as the media portraying us negatively, even at schools, uh, the miseducation that we get is also white on black violence. Them robbing us of our land is also white on black uh, violence. No, now that as a consequence, uh, it made us, in fact, it planted that self-hate seed. Now, Ubuntu, 
Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. So uh, hence why I'm saying that I, I understand uh, where they were coming from because they were thinking through their stomachs just like the politics, politicians. <laughs> So you are saying that politicians they think from their stomach. <laughs> I don't think through their stomachs those ones. Yeah. Why are you why are you saying that? <laughs> because now when you see uh the decisions that they make, you understand? You and I'm gonna I'm not gonna limit this to just uh South African politicians. Like uh African politicians uh, across Africa, you find that uh they take uh loans and then they use uh public uh, facilities such as your airports as as collateral mm. meaning that failure to pay those loans the 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 people who are borrowing them now they they control the harbors and all that you understand mm. even now the chinese are emerging as a uh, colonizers they do the very same a colonial a strategies that the European colonizers are using, like How they, they just doing that? they just uh, elevate those uh, uh, officials, black officials that are in power. They just give them a drop in an ocean. Maybe they're gonna give them mansions and also Swiss in exchange accounts. for for tenders in, or for in land. In exchange for land, because you need to understand that. Uh, <laughs> The government shouldn't be the custodian of the land. The entire black community should be the custodians of the land that determines the destiny of the land. Now, when you find that the public uh, facility now is owned by a, a few so-called foreign investors, you see the, the problem starts when you hear a, a, a politician say that uh, we need foreign investors. Uh, you see that pro that politician is a problem. Even Marcus Garvey teaches us that any leadership that teaches you to depend upon another race is a leadership that will enslave you. So also we see now with the issue of uh, BRICS, and as they say, ah, now they are the better devil, they what to not do you understand. But isn't BRICS good though? Good, good for who? Like because now when I see, uh, most of the time. Uh, when we have bilateral relationships with uh, so-called foreign investors as a slave master relationship, us as Africans, we are just merely clients. You understand? We, we only export. We don't, uh, 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 I mean, we only import, oh, import we don't export. export yeah. The only time we export is when we export raw materials such as your gold and what, and then they process them and then they sell them back to us. So the relationship was, is going to be good if it's going to be a mutual relationship whereby we are going to benefit because you need to understand that, okay, Chinese as they are affiliated with the BRICS, when they, build something, when they say they are going to build their airport, it also happened with Abu Congo. When they build airports, they, come, they, build, they bring in their labor, they bring in their food, they bring in their barbers. Now, how are they adding value to their community? It's just a historical account of how the Chinese relate with some of uh, African uh, countries that now they are colonizing, such as Abu Zambia, Nanan. If you look there, they will say that Chinese came, they are making an airport, but that airport, it doesn't add no value to, to, to the black people honest, because now no opportunities are created. So because you need to understand that Chinese have a huge population. So they create this thing called, you know, the dumping, population dumping. Yeah. Yeah. And in other countries, they use them as for when you see Chinese, they have Chinatown in all corners of the world. So now China is what is a super powerhouse. You understand? Can I ask you something? Yes. If you look at Africa, yes. do you think Africa is being sold or it's already been sold? Uh, Africa was sold out a long time ago. It's just the, now you find that there are buyers from NATO fighting uh, those. Uh, those big members because now it's like 
they are fighting over these limited resources that are left you understand mm. so hence why they fight you understand so uh when what was your question sorry man Africa being so, uh, being sold at the moment or no, already it's so, been it's, sold it's already sold out you understand <laughs> and uh, wow. i think it now it's so, uh, yeah. it's upon us uh, to to overcome our cowardness cowardness as uh, africans and just take a bull by his horns and you need to understand that we won't get a freedom without any bloodshed we must we understand that there must be a bloodshed in order for our our land to to which is it all because in order for them to rob us of our land there was a bloodshed we can never uh, get the land back through truth and reconciliation and you know, through talk through mm. rhetoric because rhetoric has an expiring date so um if it's a military war we must fight militarily if it's a verbal war we must fight verbally but as we were trying to come in a gunfight using a knife which is wrong you understand mm. i think us as a uh, africans we need to uh, have a backbone you understand and also understand that we will never get economic freedom now you understand us we are just paving for the next generation if we start being rebellious now we know that the future generation shall eat from whatever we have uh, worked for now when you look at african people do you think that there's something that we were not given and if so do you think that we should wait for that thing i believe it can be education it can be freedom it can be land or we should just take it upon ourselves because sometimes as an african person if you are hungry you can't just wait for somebody to come and feed you yes you just go to the ground and you sow seeds yes that seed is going to grow into a cabbage exactly and then, then you go back and then you cook that cabbage you eat and then you keep it moving yes but it seems as if like we waiting for something that we were robbed before I think you need to understand that uh if a person comes to you and then they I'm take just, your I'm car I'm just I'm trying to answer you yeah because now like we were colonized from a broader dimension even spiritually uh you find that I was in a conversation with this elder he was like he doesn't care about the land here because he 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 he's anticipating the land there in, in heaven you understand mm-hmm. what you yeah how a psychological bankrupt that statement is you understand so he doesn't care about the land, land yeah because now that's how because that's how what the bible sells yeah i told her that i'm just i'm trying to explain it from a broader dimension spiritually economically and otherwise so i'm starting from a spiritual level which is Now when you look at uh God from your oppressor's image uh you will always uh look at the white color as the power and authority by virtue of that indoctrination from birth in the Movelo Papa Tiso with the Bible uh which was reinterpreted by white people in order to suit their narrative uh, even if you can look at certain scriptures in the bible it was promoting slavery there's ephes chapter that says slave obey uh, your earthly master as you would obey your god you see how how confining that statement is and how uh yeah, uh, yeah. you understand so uh this thing of waiting and waiting for solution so it's it's a mentality that was instilled upon us by using religion as a as a as a tool of power but nonetheless i believe that um as africans we need to be in control of our so i'm speaking in terms of developing us yeah ourselves as african we need to be in control of our education you understand we cannot uh, be dependent on 
the formal education because the formal education is operating from a Eurocentric intellectual orientation. So we are mainly trained to solve problems of white people. Hence why even in your statement, you alluded that 100%. we we add value to, to other races, whereas we hate each other. So that goes back to my point of that seed of uh, black self-hate that was entrenched in our collective consciousness. So in order for us to re get rid of that self-hate, it's just like the best way is to remove it and install the original seeds. Yeah, I told him, uh, seeds that are rooted on loving one another as 100%. Africans. And also Ubuntu. And Ubuntu doesn't mean turning the other cheek. I want I'm not talking about that chick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so in essence, I think uh, we need to decolonize our mindset 100%. Uh, from a broader dimension because um, as black people, uh, we, we, we view success as something as to be assimilated towards a uh, wideness. You understand? So we need to rid ourselves from the the seed of self hate, and uh, so that we no longer have that inferiority complex. And then and learn our true history. When we learn our true history, it teaches us that we were conquerors, uh, even prior slavery. Uh, when you look at the minds that are in existence, those were minds that were in existence even prior our European uh, colonizers. So it's also a lie to say, for instance, even the history has been falsified to say which he, it was Jan van Riebeck who discovered gold. We already knew how to mine. We already knew how to farm. You see how the thing, Zosa was with he, uh, Shaga traded land with the mirror and Shaga never even met white people. We understand. If, if you can read the true history, read, go and read on uh, the book of Shaga written by Mazisi Kunene. The true book yeah. of Shaga, not the, the true, one. Yes, yeah. Yeah, the true bo- uh, a, a book of uh, Shaga, not the, the Shaga that speak English that we, we see there on, on TV, you understand? So our history has been falsified. Now, when you falsify, you need to understand that the history forms an integral part of your psychology, our psychology is informed by our history. Now, when our history is distorted, it means that as a consequence, our psychology becomes distorted. Now, when we say, who's the history to Shara traded for mirror, it means that black people are dumb. <laughs> yeah, it's all I learned today. That, that's, that's the narrative they are pushing. And also, when you look at Shara, there's a scene whereby uh, there's this child that is sick they try to use uh, traditional make it medicine. It doesn't work. And then this uh, call the white word, guy comes white guy, with yeah. the Western medicine and then the, the child overgrand. You understand? He, he, he become healed. So you understand with that thing in our collective consciousness, it, 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 fractures, it fractured our mind. You understand? So it need, we need to rewrite our history. And also... Uh, we need more pro-black media avenues that mm. will promote uh, self-loving messages, that will promote African beauty, that will promote African spirituality. I understand? Uh, we also need to, whilst as a work in progress, we need to, like, by way of example, Ekas Noble Propart. I don't know if you know, I'm also yeah. the marketing director of Ekas Noble Propart. Let me just cut to the chase. Yeah. We just yeah. maybe yeah. need to, 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 to buy land while still waiting for the so-called politicians to amend constitutions and stuff like that. As a work in progress, unite and translate those beer stock files and mm. grocery stock files. And it's not that black people are not united per se. We are united as Africans. But the problem is that we are united over regressive things that facilitates and maintains our oppressive. We can pull our funds together in order to start a macro stock field and they run fruitfully without any fail. 
we do run ama beer stock fair u thola mazithi buma once a month ya hlanga ona thengu utjo ala gcwalisa ama bottle that's unit and no one uba absent lab and as you see which we already have a unity we just need to uh be un- united strategically and also understanding our 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 the 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 situation as guyo as africans understanding that we are at the bottom of the economic ladder therefore it doesn't make sense for us as african to be always drunk on weekends you understand i understand that we get drunk in order to numb the pain of landless but as important what's most important is the decolonization of the mind because if the mind is weak the body suffers as a consequence That's because how, it sorry, makes it sorry makes to complete yeah, the statement yeah so it makes no sense for us maybe to take back the land without any ideology or proper mindset pro, proper mindset yeah. or outlook because we are going to take uh, we're going to return it back to them you know so firstly the prerequisite for us to be free as africans we need to decolonize our minds so that we can operate from an afrocentric cultural orientation south africa has the most hiv cases yes more than any other country yes especially in africa mm-hmm. south africa has the most it is actually the most uh or one of the most alcohol consuming country yes. in the world is one of it's part of it's also i think maybe in the top 10 or not if not 5 in terms of the rate of people committing suicide yes south africa valenje is just always in the top 10 yes. in terms of bad things yeah we don't even have electricity exactly there's something that's wrong I would say that we have a black leadership crisis. You understand? Uh I'm going to make an example. Uh you see uh, Thomas Sankara um when he was the president of uh, the former president the late president of uh, Burkina Faso when he was uh, appointed as the president that's the true african league i'm just making yeah. him as a as a case study of 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 good black leadership uh, he used his authority and power first thing when he reported office first thing he changed he changed uh, the name of the country it was ultra voltra before and then he he, he changed it to Burkina Faso meaning that the land of the upright the mm. people of integrity and also he changed policies and then to say that away with foreign aid and mm. and then in under few years under four years in, in power uh, they changed from being dependent to 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 foreign aid and then they started to export more their economy it boomed you understand so what we having now is is a leadership crisis we have a bourgeoisie uh, leadership uh, the leadership that we see today of the anc is a bypass product of apartheid you need to understand when uh, black people were given the illusion of power even to this day we always see that state capture and all that politicians are captured which is true you understand even sir ramaphosa i don't see sir ramaphosa as a president i see him as a puppet in the strings uh he just gets authority from a uh, white capitalist such as your rupert the open name that those are the presidents uh, of uh, south africa the people who are controlling the monetary and the fiscal policies so i'm emphasizing the leadership crisis because uh if the leadership is weak the people as a consequence become weak because angeti mm. yinhloko le yabona if inhloko iweak i body value of yeah it's all a lentole i think if you can fix uh, the 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 leadership uh, crisis we would have solved so many uh, problems 
my brother thank you so much for coming through i really appreciate it spirit um you mentioned so many things you shared some crazy knowledge mm. i really appreciate you for coming through um jeez man thank you ah it's a pleasure my brother. yeah what's what's your final words to somebody who's watching this can be two or three people and they would want to hear final words from you um if you have a talent if you have a skill if you have a platform you must use your skill and platform as a revolutionary instrument uh, to add value to your people your skill is not your skill alone your skill is a skill that you were given by your forebears in order for you to add value to your black people and also use your talent and power to change the narrative narrative and also collaborate with the like minded and innovate change the narrative and yeah just be the best version of yourself make sure that you add value to yourself uh love your black race also learn your true history uh so that you can know your destiny because now we 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 are lost because we don't understand where we come from you understand history is like a navigator it shall take us to our rightful uh destination and also uh practice african uh, spirituality african spirituality is powerful hence why even the apartheid government they created a uh, laws such as your witchcraft uh, land acts which uh, restricted the practice of african spirituality they saw how powerful african spirituality is practice your african culture and also understand that you are african first before you are zulu you are african first before you are a doctor you are african first before you are a podcaster always put your race first thank you so much i really appreciate it sure sure, sure.